Hello and welcome back to The Note, coming to you from Brooklyn, where spring has sprung, bringing to an end one of the most confusing markets quarters in recent memory, when markets gave it all up and then regained it all once again. That's been followed today by the beginning of April and an absolute welter of new information about the health of the US economy. Where does that leave us? Well, if you take a look at the unemployment picture, you can see that the trend that we've seen for a long time continues intact. The uh, employment market grows, but it doesn't grow fast enough to really make anybody much happier. You can see that the terrible decline in the number of people who are in the workforce, those who are even trying to find jobs, has begun to improve broadly. However, it's the same old, same old. That means, if we take a look at what's happening to average hourly earnings, that Labour's negotiating power hasn't really changed, that people aren't able to negotiate for higher earnings. It looked for a while as though pay was beginning to tick up. That seems to be over. Bad news for the many obviously very disenchanted people in this country who are thinking of voting for populist politicians. Good news for the Federal Reserve because it means less pressure on inflation. Now, we also got ISM data today. That's uh, surveys of manufacturing from across the world. All of them are fixed so that anything above 50 shows growth. Anything below 50 shows a decline. And you can see something quite interesting has happened there. The US, which had lagged for a while, has suddenly rebounded. It's back in a position of leadership for the world. China has also crept back above 50. Those two big economies that everybody was most concerned about are now at least showing signs of growth. That's not so good for Europe, but good for them. Now, what's changed? We know that a bunch of markets basically ended March exactly where they began January, but perhaps the, one of the critical exceptions to that is the dollar. It's weaker across a range of other currencies. That's tacitly due to help from not only the Federal Reserve, but from other central banks as well. And that helps US manufacturers. It makes their goods cheaper. It also helps Chinese manufacturers because the Chinese currency is linked to the dollar. Why do you see a weaker dollar? Take a look at what's happened to 10-year bond yields. Sharply lower despite what would otherwise appear to be a largely unchanged picture. And that's because the Federal Reserve is now behaving far more dovishly, talking about delaying interest rates far longer than it was at the beginning of the year. Now that does, however, have some consequences. If you take gold, it's just had its best quarter in 30 years since 1986. Quite remarkable rebound. Okay, it had been sold off very badly heading into the quarter, but it's very hard to explain, given that there's a lack of obvious inflationary pressure out there, it's hard to explain that unless it's a sign of a loss of confidence in central banks, a loss in their credibility. Now, that ultimately means then that what we have seen over the last three months is a spasm of concern about a true recession in global manufacturing, which has been reversed by concerted action by central banks, which has had the unfortunate consequence for them of really calling some of their, some of their credibility into question. Where are we heading next? Well, can I suggest one canary in the coal mine might be transportation stocks. The Dow Transport Index has long been regarded as a leading indicator for the rest of the market. And in the last year, it's been an almost perfect one. It's led the market down and then up, down and then up. And in the last few days, it started to turn down once more. A very useful cyclical indicator to look at. Beyond that, take a look at oil, obviously critical to sentiment across the world. It was at one point back positive for the year. As we speak, it's dropped back to being negative for the year. If you see another significant leg down in oil, which is easy to imagine, that is really going to shake confidence. Finally, and really most importantly when it comes to the stock market, there's earnings. Expectations for profits from corporate USA have tanked so far this year. That's true whether you're talking just about the first quarter or for the year as a whole. They usually get written down somewhat in the first quarter, but not this much. In a couple of weeks, earnings season will start. We'll start to hear 
from US companies. They give us their version of how things have gone for them. That will be an important moment of truth. So as it stands, we've had a scare. Central banks have relieved it. People still lack confidence for where we're going next. Take a look at transports, take a look at oil, and take a look at earnings.